Hello everyone, um, welcome to my uh, video series. So this video is in continuation to the um, video part one which I um, recorded last night where in the part one uh, we configured um, the routing, the BGP and OSPS, OSPF from the scratch. Um, so let me, uh, before I get started, um, let me uh, give you a um, few details so we are we all are on the same page. On my right I have a Dallas um, network and on my left I have a New York. So both the Na New York and the Dallas is connected uh, by two ISPs, ISP2 and ISP1, sorry ISP1 and ISP2. And um, the edge router, router 400 Dallas and behind that we have external switch 1 which is internal to our network and the core switch and behind that external internal network we have um, in network say like loopback 1.1.1 and loopback 100.1.1.1 so yeah in the last video we configured um, OSPF uh, between this order 4 and external switch 1 and we uh, redistributed OSPF to BGP um, into BGP that's how uh, these routes are given into the order 4 through OSPF and this order 4 uh, whatever the routes it has learned on from OSPF but after redistributing the OSPF in BGP, it's uh, advertising those routes to router 2 and router 3. And from there, router 2 and router 3 are advertising the same uh, Dallas networks to the router 1. If I go on router 1 real quick and do show IP route, you will see that 1.1.1 and um, 100.1.1. But um, so this video is in continuation to that um, BGP uh, load balancing part two. So this series we will um, advertise whatever the networks in New York. We will make sure those uh, networks are available in a Dallas um, external switch and we can ping across each other. We have layer three connectivity. And once we confirm that, uh, we will see um, which router, router one or router four preferring to communicate which router, router 2 or router 3. So like if we find it, they're preferring router 2 as the preferred route, we'll go and change that to router 3. We're going to manipulate that path selection in BGP, right? That's, that's, that's the intent of this video series. So uh, let me uh, go on router 4 and um, see what routes I'm running from the New York. But do show IP route. So I'm not running any um, New York networks like 10.1.1 or 7.1.1 in my routing table still. And also, let me tell you, um, if I log into router 1, I do have 1.1.1 route from Dallas, but if I want to ping to it, I might not be able to ping. And that will be the same for other network also, 100.1.1.1. Any guess why is that? Okay. The reason being is, for example, imagine this is the uh, the packet, the frame, right? Ping or ping frames, right? Um, so when I ping from router 1 to the Dallas network 1.1, I have a route 1.1, the packet will go to the router 2 or router 3, which one is, whichever, whatever is the preferred one, then to the router 4, all the way to the external switch, the internal network. But the return traffic doesn't know how to get to the router 1. So once the packet arrives here in external switch, it also should have a route to know how to get to the source, right? It's the packet is here in the destination, but to respond back to the ping, it doesn't know how to go there. And the proof is if I go on to the router four, I just did that. I don't have um, 7.1.1 or 10.1.1 network in my routing table. So let's first troubleshoot that. So let's hop onto the router two. This guy is like an agent, the middleman, connecting these two networks. Let's see if that router has the route. Okay. This only have 10.1.1, but doesn't have the 7.1.1 network in its routing table. So let me go to the routing to router one. Show. Sure. Let's do this. Um, these are my networks. So what I would do, why show one, let's see why this router is not advertising its loopback interface. BGP. So this command would give you your BGP configuration. So let me go and make a small change here. Router BGP 100. Redistribute connector. 
if I do show IPBG IPBGP summary so these are my neighbors 10.1.1.2 and 20.1.1.2 if I copy this IP address show IP BGP neighbor oops with this command I would know what routes I'm advertising to my router to so now I'm advertising this 7.1.1 network also to router 2 and let's uh, check the other neighbor okay I'm advertising the same routes to both the neighbors so that route uh, 7.1.1 should be in the routing table the router 2 there we go we have that 7. network in my routing table in the router 2 now let's see if the router 2 is advertising this route to the router 4 right so how you do that do the same as show IP BGP summary so the router 4 I, my neighbor is 30.1.1.2 so I will copy this show IP BGP neighbor advertised routes okay so it's advertising 7.1.1 network so let's log into the router 4 this show IP route Okay, the router 4 has 7.1.1 network in its routing table. Now, the challenge is we have to see now router 4, if router 4 is advertising that routes, whatever it has learned from BGP from the New York to the ISP and all, it's giving to our external switch. So, if I say show IP, we have ISP, um, OSP between the router 4 and external switch. Keep that in mind, please. Um, show IP, OSPF neighbor. Okay, the OSPF is up. So let's get to the external switch and uh, let's minimize this. Show IP route. Show IP route. Okay. I don't have any routes other than the directly connected routes in my routing table on external switch one. The router four is not advertising any of the BGP routes it has learned over the BGP. If you see here, it has too many routes in the routing table. But it's not giving anything to the external switch so let's go and fix that so what i'll do show run bgp and like i said we also have ospf run, protocol running routing protocol running on this router 4 which is connecting to external switch to ospf let me see what configuration i have put on the ospf Nothing fancy, only a few things here. So we'll say account FT. Let's redistribute the BG pin uh, OSPF. Okay. Router OSPF 100. Let's call that. Redistribute BGP over my AS number. Then submits. And uh, let's see what happens. There we go. So after I give the command, redistribute BG. Um, so, but what I did basically, I went into the OSPF and I said, uh, Draw for hey, whatever you have learned on your BGP, yeah, all this network, put them into the OSPF and ship it to the external switch one. And this, that's what just happened based on this command. Submits. If I go here to external switch two, I have 7.1.1 network, right? So, let's try to ping this guy. And I don't see any reason why it should not be. And remember, at the beginning of the video, we had the route for 1.1.1 for the Dallas network, but we were not able to ping them. Right? If you see here. Now that we have both connectivity on the both sides and bi directional, let's see if we can ping. There we go. And I believe we should also be able to uh, ping the other network, the 100. All right, so in this video, we were successfully able to um, provide a point to point, I mean, the both directional connectivity from router one to router four, or router four and the external switch. Uh, I mean, we have connectivity, full connectivity from New York to Dallas and uh, Dallas to New York, as you just saw in my here, um, this terminal window, router one is able to ping both 100.1.1 and 1.1 network in the Dallas, network from routing router one and the external switch 
here we are able to ping 7.1.1 loopback interface IP from the external switch. So the mechanism here is, let me repeat the one more time. So the router port, which is the edge router, it is connecting to our external switch right here, the internal using IGP protocol, OSPF. We can also use IBGP, internal BGP, but I choose to use OSPF. So whatever the routes networks we have in our sitting behind this network on external switch, the edge switch, um, are being advertised to the router 4 through OSPF. And then I gave a command here in router 4 saying uh, BGP redistribute OSPF. If I do this command here, assurance to BGP. redistribute OSPF 100. So what I'm telling here, router 4, whatever you have learned from the OSPF 100, put those routes into the BGP and ship them to router 4 and router 3, sorry, router 2 and router 3. Then those routes are being shipped to the router 2 and 3 and router 2 and 3 are advertising the same to the router 1. So now in the return traffic, the 7111 is advertising that it's network to router 2 and router 3. Then to router 2 and router 3 advertising the same routes to router 4. And again, I'm saying in router 4, hey, whatever you have learned on the BGP, put those routes into the OSPF 100 and give it to the external switch too. And this command takes care of that. You redistribute OSPF 100. Sorry, not that. Um, oh, sorry. Sure, run sec OSPF. So I'm going into OSPF um, on this router 4 and saying redistribute uh, BGP 200 subnets. So whatever the subnets and networks you have learned from the BGP, put them into OSPF. So this router 4 is kind of critical. It's kind of, as the router does, it's kind of two networks. So but that's what it's doing here. It's connecting, it's putting, it's merging the routes learned from the OSPF as well as the BGP and uh, throwing those routes on the both direction. Uh, so that's all for this um, video. Hope you enjoyed it. So I'm going to make um, part three where we will be um, doing some load balancing mechanism. We'll be playing with load balancing mechanism in the BGP, uh, influencing the path. For example, um, if I go on the router one, show IP BGP 1.1.1, let's see which route is preferring. As you see here, for this network, the Dallas network IP BGP 1.1.1 on the New York router one, it's learning that this route from both routers to this one 20.1.1 and 10.1.1 and if you see here it's two available paths and the best path is path number two that means 10.1.1.2 it's preferring router two to reach to the dallas and the return traffic same thing so in the video series number three the part number three we're going to make this primary path as a secondary and we will make this 20.1.1 as a preferred path there are multiple ways of doing it. So I'll be using one such scenario. Um, I would use uh, AS path prepens. Um, so let's see that how I'm going to achieve that, how we're going to achieve that in part number three. So don't miss that. And thanks for your time. That's all for this video. See you in the next.